My name is Jane McKellen Freud. I'm a sculptor and medalist who's recently retitled myself as Artist 2D, 3D and 4D because my practice is broadening, encompassing prints and drawings, sculpture medals, film. I'm here in Art in Action because it's a four-day demonstration to the public of artists making their work. They can ask questions. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? More importantly, how are you doing it? So it's not all secret and elite. It's all accessible. <laughs> I was working on a piece of sculpture. It was a self-portrait. went on for eternity. Eventually it dried out so badly that when I picked it up, the head separated from the body. So I added collar. To the collar, I thought I'd add a tie. And the tie looked incredibly phallic. And I thought it was extremely Freudian. And that in itself was a big strong pull for me into a subject matter that was more than it seemed. That I was staring at these objects on people's chests. I thought, this tie symbol is the same as a Shabti symbol. It's a symbol of staff, of workers, of uh, hierarchy, of uh, uh, authority. My collaboration with the British Museum came about through Neil Spencer the curator of the Department of Ancient Egypt and Sudan. We have many examples of Shabtis in our collection and you can trace the development of these over time. Um, so he asked me what I was interested in and I said, well, as it happens, I am making a tie in copper. I thought it remarkably resonant of uh, an Egyptian form. And so we talked more and more about the connection between the tie, the Shabti, and the symbolism. These were placed in graves of individuals, those who could afford them. People expected to have 401 of these in, in their burial. And what were these shabtis for? Well, they were effectively servants for the afterlife. Um, so these uh, individual figures uh, would uh, be called upon to do agricultural work uh, for the, the deceased. Workers. Yeah, so labour in the fields, digging earth, moving sand and so on. Everyone had to have them throughout the society. It was very important to you know, put your feet up in the afterlife and you know, have a bit of a rest, have your servants. Even if you hadn't had them in this life, you, you know, damn sure you're going to have them in the next life. My predilection is for 2.5 dimensions. And the Egyptians, well, they would have understood that totally. <laughs> and so this collaboration with the British Museum has had a massive uh, impact in that it's renewed my confidence and my faith in the 2.5 dimensions and two-sided two objects, which I like so much. The other piece that I focused on for uh, the show at Art in Action was the mummified cat that I found on the British Museum website. The website brings back descriptions of the objects, where they're from, and also images. Can that small image be made larger? Yeah, we can click through, uh, bring up a high quality image which can be printed out. This has had a great impact uh, on my work and the way I approach doing my work because maybe for the first time in history I'm able to do a virtual residency, an online residency at the British Museum without having to come in every day to write hundreds of letters. I can just simply access the collection online which has made me think I can work anywhere in the world and work in this way with collections. And I, it's, it's absolutely um, mind-blowing that it, it's obvious but not obvious. It's only when you really do it and, and see the potential of, of access to information and ancient objects through high-quality high, high quality images that you can see from different uh, sides. You can see one object from different sides, and this is extraordinary technology, and it really has influenced the way I work now and I'll work in the future. Mm -hmm.